Cool. All right. So now let's talk about how to uh, approach project three and think about how we want to do that. Uh, so you already mentioned, like, OK, I want to read in the input, right? And I want to think about how to design. If I want to use like a 2D vector, vector of vectors, right? So if you think about kind of like a list, right? Or like two-dimensional thing, right? You're going to have rows, right? And every row is going to have, so what's going to be the first element in each of the sub vectors? So I was thinking of having it like that. That's the first okay. test case. Uh, like, is that valid or is that just complete? I don't know. Yeah. What's the first test case? I just uh, S goes to little a, big A. Little a, big A. Uh, S goes to Z or A, or Z A. Uh, big A, sorry. It's okay. Okay, big A. And then A goes to little B, big B, little C, big B. Wait, A goes to what? <laughs> B, big B. Uh, okay, I can write it. Sure. Okay, so then how's that going to look when you finally, so let's like do some backwards, right, working, which is kind of what we're doing. Think about like what's the data structures that we want to have at the end. That's what I was thinking of, trying to do it that way. I don't know if that's just... Okay, <laughs> I see, I see. Uh, it's not bad. So this would be like vector zero is this list of the non-terminals, and then the first column is this kind of tricky. Rules. Okay, yeah, so you have... Okay, so this is going to be expanding based on how many rules you have, and this will never expand column-wise this way. Yes. Right? Okay, so one problem here, and this is actually something I never hadn't talked about yet, but I realized I should have because some people um, uh, had this problem. They got into a problem like the last week of the project and realized that it's crazy. So part of the problem is, so what are you storing in here? So what's inside each of these squares? So at first I was going to be a string, but otherwise it'd be a node from the struct that has a string, I don't know the word for it, field, I guess. Yeah. And then other information like how many non uh, how many terminals are in it. Okay. So like you have that and then a number along with that associated with it. Right. Okay. So we're thinking about each of these are strings. Right. Okay. So part of what you have to do is think about how does this relate to this? Because right? this is the context free grammar. This is the abstract data that you're actually reading in. And then the question is, does this accurately represent this? And can you easily access elements in here that you're going to want to do when you access certain things in here? Can see what I'm saying? So like for instance, uh, when you're calculating first sets, right? you want to know what's the first symbol here. So the first of uh, whatever F, the first of Z is, I'm going to add to the first of S here, right? So can I easily can I do that? That was another thing that I wasn't sure about. Like if right. it's stored as a string in here, can you reaccess that and determine exactly? You have to Does essentially reparse it every time. Okay. So will it work? Yeah. Do I suggest you do it like <laughs> that? No. Uh, here's another way I want to think about it. So there's actually, if you think about it, there's multiple concepts that you're putting in here. Right? You kind of have all of the non-terminals here as your first row. As your first row. And each of these represents uh, one rule. Right? So that, it's good that you have the structure here. Um, what about, can you design it differently in like a 2D array that resembles more like this? I mean, or just like an array switching of the order of it like that? Yeah, in some sense switching the order, but have these be separate, right? Oh, like, okay, I see. Rip them apart. Like we don't want to think about like uh, we want we want we don't want to think about 
strings okay. necessarily right as a that right actually hand rule. completely helps because the way I was thinking about it, I mean, the way I was looking at it, came across that I had a problem because as you're iterating through it, you can't go from here to here because in the string it goes the S A B and then it does the 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 hash and then yes. it goes to this the production rule. So you mm -hmm. can't really go from one to the other. Right. So you have to do it that way first and then here, and it just kind of makes yeah. it complicated. So yeah. It's so how would how would you kind of I don't know. So doing it in the same order, it would be remember the nice thing about vectors of vectors is that you don't have to have it doesn't have to be a square, right? Each of the lines can have different lengths. Yeah. What are, what's in here? What's in the box? The string and... Now anytime you want to get inside here, you got to re-parts that again. So would having it have each... Each symbol be a different box? Is that how it should be? Is that an easier way to do it? Okay. So, okay. do what you're doing here. Do it like this on all these, and we'll try to see if that's easier than what you have here. This is basically the same thing, just kind of bring it to a different style. Okay. You can do this because you're using vectors, and vectors can be as long as it wants. Exactly. So, now if I said, hey, for rule, so if I numbered these rules, right? One, two, three, four. And I said, okay, rule three, add the first of the leftmost symbol on the right hand side to the first of A. How'd you do that over here? So, I mean, for the first, all you have to do is So the big difference here is that there's inherent structure in these strings, right? Because there's an order to each of these symbols. So if you can rip that out, right, and represent so that your data represents the order here, then you can say things like start at the first string, right? Because then otherwise you have to take the string, do space parsing on it to figure out which one's the first one, and then try to find it if it's the uh, insane nightmare. And having it in the order of having them separate makes so much more sense now because it Right. really well. Okay, and one other thing I want you to think about with rows and columns. Um, because, you know, when I think about like a vector, right, each vector is a row in some sense, and then the first element of that is the column. Okay, so it should be the other way around. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I, yeah, right? I, wasn't, I was thinking about that, and it wasn't true. Okay. Okay, so that's okay. one thing. So that's actually definitely how you can represent, um, you can represent the rules of a context free grammar using a 2D array. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. no. But that's not the only thing. So like, what are some other parts about a context free grammar, right? So this just describes the rules, but there's other, what are the other important things about a context free grammar? Terminals and non terminals, which are included right. in but They're information in there. about them. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So like, you know, maybe in addition to this, you also want to keep another data structure that's uh, of symbols. Right? So this would be so what are the symbols in this grammar? S A B little A little A little C. 
they also have salon. Okay. They don't actually appear here, but they're kind of implicitly in everything, right? So you can create this list, right? As you're going and parsing these rules, right? Every time you flex and you say, okay, I know this is the left hand side of the rule, right? Because your input is uh, basically going to be what? S A B hash, this rule hash, this rule hash, this rule hash, this rule hash, and then a double hash. Okay. So you read this in, so you can add S A and B to your simple list. Right? And you can say, hey, so the other thing is just the symbols by themselves. And then the terminals as yeah. a separate one. <laughs> well, it kind of all depends. You can either do it, yeah, you can have two lists as like a terms and non terms. Is that right? So this would be S A B, and this would be A Z C. Maybe that's one that allows me to do it. And having something like this would really help with the first task because anytime you come across it, you can. Yes, that's why when you're parsing, right? You say get token. Okay, it's an S. Great. I know because it's in the first line that this is one of my non terminals. Great. A, add it to non terminal. B, add it to non terminal. Saw hash. Great. That means now I'm parsing rules. So I look at this, I say this S better be a non terminal. Right? <laughs> when I create these rules, because that's how it has to be. And if it isn't one, do you just stop, or do you just continue and forget that line? Uh, I would say you should stop. Okay. Like, I think that's the safe way to do it, just stop. Uh, and then you parse an arrow, you get an arrow token, and then you parse something, and you get an ID back. You have to look at that ID and say, is this a non-terminal? Right. If it's not, then I've seen a new terminal, and I can add it here. And if you do it in order, right, this will tell you the order that they're added in, which is handy information to have later. Right, so we add A to our list of terminals when we see this token here. Because we know from the assignment description, anything that's a symbol in one of these rules that is not a terminal that we already know, or that's not a non-terminal that we already know, it must be a terminal. So when we see this, we look it up in terminals, and we go, okay, it's not in there, so add it to my terminal list. I know it's one of my terminals. And you probably want to check make sure it's not already in there, so not adding multiple A's, all that stuff. And then you add that A here, right? And say, okay, now I'm creating, definitely do it this way. But you say like, okay, now I'm creating my rule list. So I have S as the first element of my list. And I'm gonna add A, right? And then I'm gonna read the next thing here. It's gonna be a big A, and I see, oh, that's a non-terminal, that's great. Right here, and you get to the end, so you know you're done with that rule. This is just your, this okay. thing, just okay. this way, right? So this would be, Kind of you're drawing like this, right? It's like every row in here is going to be a rule. This is the result of you adding things to your list. And also, so in the PDF of the product description and everything, it has all the special different like, strings that are terminals and non-terminals, but in all of the test cases, none of them are anything but single letters. Do we have to make sure that we will read full strings? Oh, heck yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it should support, like, there's the example. So there's the, there's actually more test cases than we actually give you because yeah. the test cases that we give you, plus there's on the assignment description, there are more test cases in there, right? I think those test cases in there use stuff like decal and it could be core or it could be vital, or, right? Like, case doesn't matter at all. Um, just about, you know, it's a non-terminal if it's in this list, otherwise the terminal. So. Okay. So the problem then kind of becomes, right, so yeah, you should definitely, like, the way to attack this problem is get this all done and in there. So you've got it and you're correctly parsing everything. Once you have these rules and these terminals and non-terminals, everything becomes so much easier because you can just deal with those and assume that those are correct, implement first and follow set rules. Yeah. Then you have to have, ask questions like, how do I do sets? Right. How do I do, because I have, you know, calculate first sets, you need to create, initialize the empty sets for all of your non-terminals. Right, so I'd say, you know, first, S is equal to this, Right? I'm just doing it like this, but you would you need to 
think about. How do I represent a set? What data structure am I going to do? How do I represent a set for each of these? Well, how do you dynamic or represent? Well, you want to know. Correct. You don't know how much is going to be necessarily in there. Um, there's a few ways to do it. You can actually, I believe C++ is a set class, so you could probably use okay. a hash that. Vectors are nice, because they're not really that different. I mean, C++ stuff that I was looking into, like you can say, this vector is this one. And it'll do so, a comparison. Okay. It'll, uh, I guess it'll but that's the add problem. it, but it'll copy it. Yes. It'll make it the same thing. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. That's part of the trick. That's part of the tricky things, exactly. You need to like, when you're doing set comparison, Right? And you say, uh, like, the set containing, you know, A, B should be equal to the set containing B, C. Right? So if you just implemented this as a vector of A, B, right? The vector A, B is not equal to the whole thing. B, A is what I meant. Yeah, right? So the vector order matters, but here order doesn't matter. So you have to make sure whatever data structure supports the semantic. Also, you're going to need the union operator. So there is a set structure in C++, sort of? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty <laughs> confident there is. Um, I'm pretty confident there is. But you can do it using lists or um, uh, whatever. Actually, one way to do it. Okay. So part of the issue, potential issue with just having strings everywhere, right, is like, these strings don't really mean, I mean, once you read it in, all you care about are that this symbol is the same as this symbol. You don't really care that that symbol is the string capital A, right? To your program, all you need to know is these are the same, but these are different. That's different from everything else that's not just this A, mm -hmm. right? You also want to know that it's a non-terminal. Right? That's an important piece of information. So you could rec represent them as numbers if you need Exactly, them. yes. With an enum, like, would that be useful? So you can't use an enum because an enum is a compile time feature. right? An enum says this type will only be one of these end things. You don't know what end is going to be beforehand right? when you compile it. Okay. Because it's dynamic. We don't know how much yeah. this stuff is. Uh, but you could definitely use an integer but you have to keep track of which is which one is which exactly track. exactly yes um, and that actually can, it can make some things easier um, but it's, it's about it's like so much complexity I want to throw at you all <laughs> at one time so. You can say, what is this number? Mm -hmm. And then go to where that number should be if it should be in there. Yeah, you can do it. Exactly. If you're, using, uh, if you're using vectors to represent your sets and you have integers in here, if before any time you compare them, you sort them, then you'll be able to know that they're otherwise. The other thing about sets is uh, there's no duplicate entries in a set, right? Mm -hmm. So like, you can't have a set like this. Yeah. I mean, if you just use vectors, and you were to do like AA, A, right? The vector AA A is not equal to the vector A with the blank two and it's a blank one. But the sets and sets they're equal. So you need to, you need to make sure these are removed or that you only have unique elements if you're using a vector. So yeah, this is why this project is tricky. Because there's a lot of you're reading the input, you have to build the data structures, you gotta think about right how to design the data structures. Uh, and then you have to think about sets, how are you gonna do sets? So, Any questions on like design level? I don't think so. I mean, I haven't gotten very far, so I'm sure I'll come across more issues as I go through it. Like start early. Yeah. 